Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It is October 6th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and really in the big scheme, it was a range day today, but we had a nice trend up and a, a nice two-tiered trend down. The only thing is we didn't really get a retest of the high on this one. Um, maybe I don't have this one drawn quite right. Maybe if we adjust it just a little, just see what we get. Let me play with it just a minute. Could be that I was off a little bit on that one because I didn't quite catch that first swing there. If you catch those first couple of bars with that close right there, let's just see how that fits. Hmm. Yeah, I mean looks like maybe I missed that one. I originally had mine a little flatter uh, based off the upper side. But I can see now I probably missed that one. So I got a little, um, I couldn't figure, you know, I was a little miffed when we didn't get a retest here. But you get a real clue here that something has changed. And let me show you this because this is a really important learning point right here. Uh, notice how the e, how prices made a high here and shot right through that EMA. There's there's no it, it tried to get a little resistance and just kept going, and you so you really get very little resistance. You pull back, and then it shoots down again, and then it pulls back and tests it again and goes down. That is telling you something's wrong. Uh, something has changed, and so even though I didn't quite read that channel right. Um, you still had clues that something was going on here. And generally, you can kind of see that prices are swinging back and forth, both sides eat all day, uh, even in this downtrend. So that tells you that there's, you know, that it's kind of a range day. And it doesn't surprise me that we had a range day after rallying almost 100 points, you know, 80 points in the last couple of days. Uh, we were overdue for a uh, for you know, some congestion and kind of a range day and let the market consolidate a little bit. That's typical. But, um, yeah, this was a good learning point because um, I missed this channel. And it shows you don't have to, you know, you can, you can be close. You don't have to get it exactly right, and you still can generally come out. But we didn't get a retest the way I had it drawn. Looking at it like this, I see the break here. And look at that little gap right there. How it gaps over the trend line. Closed on its low, open on its low, and it never could back up and fill it there. You will see that over and over around trend lines. And that generally is just telling you that's a clue that, hey, you got your trend line right. And um, for whatever reason, I missed that this morning. It didn't really matter. Um, I didn't like this setup here. It was, even though it's a second entry, I didn't get a very good bar. And by the time this bar closed, it's so high that you got to try to get in back here, and it never came back and filled me. Uh, it does give you another chance here on like a little breakout pull back long. Um, and again, it's it, um, it's right off the EMA, so I did like it to get a chance to get back on. But let's back up and start down here where uh, right after the seven o'clock hour. Um, I just wanted to show you how I had my channel originally and I couldn't figure out why I did you know when we got the break here I thought we'd probably get a retest but when it shoots right through like this that is a reversal type pattern that is not what you're going to see doesn't mean that you can't get a trap here and get a retest um, but notice how it never gave you a second entry long and it just kept going long. once it starts heading lower again you got to look for a measured move here and that measured move there's the first leg down, so I'm looking for that as a minimum, and we even went further. So this thing was weak at that point. Uh, but let's back up and talk about the first trade, And uh, but I did want to show you that before I kind of forgot about it. But, uh, but anyway, we had a trend working down, and we had a little break and a new low here. Uh, but really, by the time the seven o'clock hour is getting here, we look how this look at this how this does look what each swing does when it comes back. It gets near the EMA and it goes lower. Then suddenly it shoots right through. That's telling you something is going on there. Um, 
This is in the pre-market hour, so it's a little thinner, and you can get some out of whack stuff. But the price action is generally still valid. There's a second entry long here that I like, uh, and it does have a little trap. But this is such a big bar that I don't I don't like going long right there. If you enter here, you got to come back here and get within your two point. And it would have come back and filled you on this one, but then you can just re-enter here. Of course, you get a better entry here than over here. But even here, when it breaks higher, it pulls back a few ticks and gives you a chance to enter. So um, let's circle this first one green with the, un the understanding that you got to, when it breaks higher, you got to come back in here and get a better entry. And of course, it does come back. So if you're already in, when it comes back and turns back up, you can add on here. Uh, you don't have to be quite as, um, as conservative on this one because you got a lot of room before you get to the top. But notice this um, this is a new swing low. This low is lower than this low. And so you get a basically a failed second entry short after a big shoot up through the EMA. So this is like a reversal pattern. So I like this one, making this one blue. And this was a great trade. And if you doubled up here, you had a nice chance to really make some money early. And there's your first leg. And when you're looking for your measured move, guess where you're looking for it to go? Right to exactly where it went. And then it turns down. And you actually get a little... Um, let me move this so you can see. You're pulling down and you get a little break here um, and then a turn down and you make a new low and then it reverses. I like that for a long. Uh, it's a second entry long as well, but you get that little failed, that little trap right there and the bounce right off the EMA. But look at the new high pullback first entry, pullback second entry. There is a trend line working down through here, but this little trap and this second entry and it really closed outside uh, right here, but it really kind of went outside and then down. So it was all in one move. Um, it's a little different, but I still like that one uh, because this thing was pretty strong and I figured we'd test that high again. I really thought we may go higher, but we tested that high and then turned down. And then I don't like entering here. Uh, this is a second entry long, but this low is lower than those lows. Look how it shot right through the EMA. That's not a good sign. Um, yeah, originally I had my trend line a little flatter and this looked like a bounce off the trend line. So it was real tempting, but I don't like that signal bar. And by the time you got this, you can't get in it, but notice you get the breakout pull back long here. Um, and notice how this breaks lower and turns up. I like going long there. Um, you do have to go long at the high of the day, but this thing is moving pretty quick, and you get that little trap right there. Uh, it's a breakout pullback long, and this is a fairly bullish bar. You might uh, let it pull back and get in a little further back, but I'll be honest, um, I, li I, I like to use a stop there. and It's dangerous, but if you look at the big picture here, especially when I thought this was a bounce off the uh, trend line, I really like that for it to go higher. Um, and there's actually a failed second entry short here. Notice that this low is lower than this little double bottom. And so you get a first entry short. It pulls back. There's a big bearish bar, and you get a second entry short. You know you're going to catch those people trying to uh, sell the highs, and it reverses instantly. Uh, I did make this one green because it's so close to that high, and you've already kind of made one little short push up. You may just get another shorter one and turn down. Uh, so I think it gets a little riskier there, and it's not off the, the trend line at this point. Um, even on this steeper one, the way I originally had it, it was way down here. So it wasn't anywhere close to the trend line or anything. So I didn't like that one, and we've pushed. We've already had the two measured moves and a new high now. Uh, so it's getting risky, so I don't like any more longs there. You can't go short up here. Um the only thing I would say, if you had this drawn properly and you saw the break and you see how far away from that EMA is, these trades generally are pretty good trades pulling back to the EMA if you get a really good signal bar here, bearish. So if you saw the break in the new high and um, 
how far away this was from the EMA and you want to be really aggressive, I'm probably okay with you taking that. But generally, I like to wait on the second entry. And that doesn't come till here, and then you don't get a very good signal bar. Uh, but when this thing tries to go higher here, it looks like it's going to bounce, and it instantly turns down again. That's uh, I like going short right there because look how it turn pull it pull, rushes right back through the EMA, pulls back and tests it. I would have liked it better if, if this bar would have broke higher and then turned down, but I'm okay just going short right there, um, and then looking for that measured move. And we got a lot more than that actually. Um, but you couldn't go short off this second entry counting off the high. And let me explain that. I, I gets really confusing for new people. But this is this is your first leg and then your pullback. And so this is your second leg. So if you're counting off the opposite side, this I consider that a second entry when it broke lower there. I probably should have called that something different, but I to myself when I first came up with the names and the things I call some of this stuff. That's just what I always called it, and uh, and it, it's really just a second leg down, so I treated it like a second entry counting from this way, and this first breakdown is the first entry, but that's only off a new high or a new low. So if you're coming from down here, there's your first entry up, and it pulls back, and you get a second entry long right there counting off this low. So I hope that's clear, and if it's confusing you, just don't worry about that and concentrate on the regular second entries. And come back to that later because it can get confusing and if I had it to do over with I would I would have named it something different but um, you know we've been doing this for 10 years now and I've always called it that so it's a little bit hard to change it at this point and uh, so I hope that's clear but anyway nice trade right here and uh, you've moved too far you're too far away from the EMA I don't like going short on any of these it was a little tempting to go long right here, but that really kind of set the trend line and it didn't pull back and touch it till here. But notice again how big that bar is and the fact that it didn't break above this one. And you got three bars stacked up there with this big, huge bar. Uh, it's tempting to go long with just a stop there. And if you had it, it would have been a four tick failure. You would have, it would have bounced off your limit order, probably wouldn't have filled it and you would have got burned. So if you want to go long on this one, um, and it is a failed second entry short too, uh, but it should have shot out the other side most likely. But if you want to go long on this one, I think you got to get in there with um, a limit order, a tick or so back, just to give you a little more room and to get a to get the right size stop to try to take that trade, because this is really bearish here, and there and we're likely going to test this low again um, but you figure you're you've got this trend line and you, if you're following the rules you got to get a retest a break and a retest of the high um, as well and so that's why I like the long here notice you're pulling back first entry pull back second entry but more than that notice the double really a triple bottom right across there and then this makes a little higher low uh, on a second entry and so and it's really a failed second entry short. You definitely don't want to go short there because it's right into this support and you just had the break of this. So um, you're likely to get a retest. So I like that one. Then it pulls back and it gives you a second entry long here. And again, it's real tempting. You could have taken this one. It would have worked, but it, it's very similar to this right here. And so it's, all, it's almost like a repeat pattern. Although, um, because you've really got a wider double bottom and then the failed break lower and it turns up. So it looks like kind of like a repeat pattern to me. Um, and this one didn't work, so there, it pulled back first. So there's a good chance this one pulls back. But when you get the failed second entry short and it turns up again and makes another high or low, um, I like going long here. This is another one you, I probably wouldn't use a stop because it's, it's such a big bar when it breaks higher drop a limit order see if it'll pull back and you may not be so conservative with this one maybe only a tick or two back in it because it is a trap and we did try to go lower twice and we are looking for a retest of this high we also didn't come back and test this breakout or this um this was the resistance earlier that turned in support 
And generally you're going to test that before you go lower. And so it did come back and test it here. And that kind of set your trend line on your first two swings. Um, and notice how far you are away from the M. Even though that looks like a doji, that's a fairly bearish bar right there. Uh, it's one tick from closing on its low. So I like going short there, just hoping you at least get a pullback to the EMA. But um, thinking that, hey, we're probably going lower. Um, now that we've come back and tested this and got this kind of bearish bar, you might have used the lemon order. It would have come back and filled you several ticks back into this thing. But I, I like just using the stop there because of where it's at in the context. And it's a slightly higher break, failed break above that. But when it pulls back here and turns down, um, especially when it broke one tick higher than that big bullish bar and turns down and goes right out the other side, just have your stop sitting there because that is a trap. When you see that, and there's actually a... I don't have it on here. There's a trend line working right up to there, and you had a break in the new high, and that was another reason I like that short there. You can see that little channel. But uh, when this broke higher and turned down, you know, you know you've got them trapped right there. Go short there. Don't ask any questions, and this thing takes off. And at this point, I would be looking a measured move like so and you can see we got a perfect measured move there to the tick and it just doesn't get any better than that and then it bounces and guess where that's at the previous low um, it's right off the trend line on top of that I mean there's just so many clues there that tells you hey we may get a bounce here but I really like that trade and then you get a failed second entry long here. Notice the new high pull back first entry, pull back second entry. Fairly bullish bar coming off that low. But uh, you better not be going long right there. Um, after we, you know, after we just made that lower high and shot right through the EMA and then pull back, um, I like going short right there uh, because it's a trap. It's a fairly, you know, it looks a little like a doji, but it's really a bearish bar. It's only a tick or so off its low. And this one shoots out. You don't know it's going to take off like that, but you got room to get out before you get to here. And um, this thing really shoots lower. Um, and then guess where you bounce here? Notice what happens here. You pull back. You get a first entry, you pull back. This is a really bearish bar. Um, I don't like going short right there, the, the, but when it turns up again and turns back down, this is like a breakout pullback short. Um, but what I, what I actually, actually let me back up. This is actually your signal bar. And notice the little double top and the one tick and it turns down and how bearish it is. But you can't go short right into that low. So what you want to do here is it, when this breaks lower and triggers, if you can get in back up here, which you could have, I'm okay with taking that trade because that's the first break of this channel. And this is really bearish. Your measured move is way down here. Your low of the day is way down here. There's a good chance we're going to get through there. Uh, but you can't go low too close to this last low. You really don't. You've got a little support across there at this point, but when it breaks lower, that's like a breakout pullback short as well. It's like a failed second. It's a failed second entry long. It's a double top with a one tick break above it. So there's a lot of reasons like that one. It is a little aggressive though, so I circled it green based on the fact that you got to get in a little further back on that one. Otherwise, just skip it because you don't want to get trapped going short right here and it bouncing. When it gets here and it did bounce it didn't get above the signal bar but look what happened when it met that low it bounced so if you didn't get in a little further back you had to ride this bounce out and so that's you got to be really careful I, i've had a couple of emails with another trader uh the last couple of days and he made a mistake going long like right here and um 
it breaks higher, he gets trapped, and it's, it turns straight down. There was actually a news item or something that contributed to the big sell-off. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, he learned the lesson. But the biggest thing was if you enter long right here, your stop has to go right here. This one you would have gotten out. Let's say, let's find one like right here. Let's say you enter right here and it turns up and turns down. Well, your stop should have been right below or actually it would be this bar. So your stop's way down here. So that's not a good example either. Um, it was at a high. This is probably a good example right here. Um, just assume it's like right over here. But he gets this little pullback and he goes long right here and it turns up and then it turns down and it braces lower and he, you know, he has a big loss. But if he had put his stop where it belonged, which is right below the signal bar, which is right here, the most he had lost was a few ticks or a couple of points or whatever. So you got to follow the rules is basically what I'm getting at. But anyway, back to the trades. There's a couple more here I wanted to show you. Um, just stay out of that. Look at all that jumbled mess. Everything stacked up side by side. This is a little trading range. There's a failed break out the low side. The bar is too big, though. Then there's a failed break out the low side or the high side that goes back. You know, you figure you're going back to the low side, and it does take off. But you just, you don't want to enter there. You don't know, you know, the odds of it doing this are not very good. Most of the time you'll get trapped. So just stay out of that. Um, you shoot down, you make a new low. It bounces. You get a first entry short. Look where that first in, cent, entry short is. Look how this went right through the EMA. You don't get much resistance there, that reversal type pattern. It bounces, it goes higher, and then it pulls back, and you get that failed second entry short. I like that one um, for a long. I did make this one green uh, because you still have the two-tiered channel, and you don't really have a break of it yet. Well, you, you might could say we had a close outside of it here, but that's so close that it could be that my trend line was off just a hair, so you, you can't. You need something that's more clear than that, and that one's just so close that it's just not real clear. Uh, you could change your trend line just a hair, and that one would not be a break. So that one's kind of iffy. So you got to be careful. Uh, you, but notice how it comes through the EMA, and you get that trap, and you figure it's probably coming back to here. So I like that one with idea, but it is a little aggressive. Plus, you got this support here, and it's kind of catching that support again. So I like it with the idea that if you're being aggressive, you might pull it right it back to here. And then you definitely get a break here, but you don't get a real good setup to go short again. Notice what happens. You pull down, you get a new low. You get a first entry, but you never get a second entry till way up here. And uh, this is a good bit away from the EMA, but it's not a very good signal bar. Um, it does make another tick higher and then turns down. But again, it's not a very good signal bar. So it's tempting to go short in there, but I would just kind of stay out of that. You don't want to go long either. It just keeps going. But finally, it makes a new high. It, it actually made a new high here. So that's another reason you want to go long. Notice this trend line or this trend channel, the break, the new high. And then it kind of just gets choppy. But when it makes that eye, pulls back, makes another one, it gives you this big bearish bar. It actually went out the top first and then came out the low side. So you could use a stop there. But if you wanted to wait on a break of this one and come back with your stop there, you can do that. Um, and then you, you get a failed second entry long and another big bearish bar. But again, I wouldn't use a stop here. It's just too big. That bar is huge. I would let it break lower and try to get back in here within the two points, at least something reasonable. And um, and this is right, both of these are right into the two o'clock hour as well. So you just had to kind of be patient after lunchtime. There wasn't much happening. We just kind of got flat here. Um, so, but I did like these two based on what we just talked about. Uh, we did have the break here and the move to a new high. And so you definitely don't want to be going long in there. 
you're just kind of waiting on a trap or something to give you an idea of a short and again it's really jumbled and messy and it's late in the afternoon so but they do fit our rules so if you follow them based on what I told you here this this bar is just too big that late in the day I would definitely use a lemon order I'd wait on the break drop a lemon order in so maybe that one should be green for that reason it's a good setup though and it's a good signal bar it's just too big um, but that's basically what I saw today uh, again it's just a trading range a day and notice we made the new low now after the break of this one it took a while I mean this is just a jumbled mess and there is a trend line working down through there too you can see that flatter maybe it's going to be that flat but let's readjust that and so yeah that still works that's how you kind of verify it try to make it fit on both sides and you can see that fits really nicely and you get the break and move to a new low so anyway not much else I can say about today that is well, nothing else here really worth mentioning. So really, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. Hope you had a great trading day. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.